Good, good evening on this blessed Ash Wednesday. I'm so glad that you could join us tonight as we begin our 40-day pilgrimage through the season of Lent. Um, if you did not pick up ashes, um, you can use water or you can use oil when we get to that point, or you can simply make the sign of the cross on your forehead. That works too, um, whatever you want to do. Um, if you did uh, pick up ashes, make sure you give those a little stir um, because I, I was playing with them tonight myself and noticed that they've separated, so they need to be, they need, they need a little stir stir. I also want to introduce to you uh, Mandy West. She is on the keyboard tonight and um, is trying us out as we are trying her out. So welcome, Mandy, and we're glad that you're here with us tonight. Let's begin our worship. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Brothers and sisters, God created us to experience joy in communion with God, to love all humanity, and to live in harmony with all of God's creation. But sin separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended for us. Also, by our sin, we grieve our Father, who does not desire us to come under judgment, but to turn to God and live. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works of love, the disciplines of Lent, help us to wage our spiritual warfare. I invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to this struggle and confess your sins, asking our God for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. Let everyone tremble, for the day of the Lord is near. The prophet Joel cried out, Return to the Lord with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let us confess our sins and repent of all unrighteousness. Merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we, we have, have been, been a rebellious, rebellious people. people. We have broken, we your, have covenant. broken your covenant. We have, we have tolerated injustice, injustice in our land. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not We quarrel and fight among ourselves, and we use religion to cover our deceit. 
We have become a mockery of our heritage. The world looks at us and asks, where is their God? Forgive us, O God. Subdue our rebellious hearts and restore in us the light of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you remo remove the, mo the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. In the name of Jesus Christ, know that you are forgiven and rejoice. Amen. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite you to grab your ashes or water or oil or whatever you have and make the sign of the cross on your forehead. So I squat down a little bit. And remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we mo may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. The first reading for tonight comes from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will it again, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the minister of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel for tonight is from the sixth chapter of Matthew. Jesus taught those who were gathered before him, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, <clears throat> they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may, may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is said that Ash Wednesday is the day all Christians attend their own funerals. It's the only official day of the church year where you will hear as part of the liturgy of the day, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, or as we tend to say it, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. The only other time that you will hear these words is at a funeral. Ash Wednesday is the day that we, the living, Contemplate the day that we shall all return to that of which we are made. Dust. Contemplating one's own mortality is truly a sobering thing. None of us will live forever, at least not in these bodies. And so on Ash Wednesday, it is the perfect opportunity to take a look at our lives and ask some questions. What's working? What's broken? What can I fix and what can I do differently? It is a call and an opportunity for us to take stock, to reassess and reevaluate and make some changes in our lives where we discern that it is necessary. No one knows when that final day will be for him or for her, but until that time comes, there is much to be done. And perhaps the most important thing we can be doing is to work on our relationship with God and to work on our relationship with one another. And that's also a very important part of Ash Wednesday. And it seems that the best way to work on those relationships is to work on yourself. So Ash Wednesday is not just about contemplating our mortality. It's also about considering what we can do, and how we can best use and steward whatever time we have left. And that's exactly what Joel is saying. That's what Joel is getting at as he implores his readers to listen to him. Blow the trumpet, Joel commands. Sanctify the fast. Call the people together and admonish them to repent. And notice, it's not an individual repentance. It's not personal. It was a call to the entire community. Now, you might wonder, well, what does that look like? What does it mean to have communal repentance? Well, in ancient times, that meant sitting together in ashes and wearing sackcloth or what we might call potato sack or gunny sack and generally looking sad. 
It was a time to think about the bad things that you've done and maybe commiserate and compare notes with your neighbors about your sins and, and what you want to change going forward. Ah, Joel says, that's great. That's a wonderful place to start. But none of those things mean a thing if they're only being done for show. Religious practice at the time of Joel, and really even at the time of Jesus, was much different than it is now. So much of how we practice faith, certainly in terms of prayer and repentance and those sorts of things, that's private. Back then, though, it was very much a, a public event. 95% of people in town practiced the exact same faith you did. And especially in smaller communities, communities that may have had one synagogue or, or one gathering place, everybody went to the same church. So if it was Fat Tuesday and everybody was eating pancakes, well, you did too, whether you liked them or not. And if it was Ash Wednesday and everybody had some schmutz on their foreheads, well, you did too, whether you wanted it or not. And so on, because it's what you did. And it's what the community did together. You did these things whether they meant anything to you or not. You did these things whether you consciously thought about what you were doing or whether you were just going through the motions because it was expected of you. As a community, it's what you did. And that is what Joel is calling him out for. That's what he's calling us out for. This is what he's getting at when he says, rend your hearts, not your clothing. Tear your hearts into pieces. Leave your clothes alone. Is there somebody at the door? Somebody knocking at the door? No? Sorry. Tear your heart into pieces. Leave your clothes alone. A sign of repentance or mourning back in the day was to tear one's clothing. And usually it was just a little tear, but it was big enough so that everybody could see that you were mourning. It was an outward sign of, of that time in your life. And Joel says, okay, fine, big deal. Anybody can do that. And you can have that little tear in your clothing and have it not mean anything. That's the problem. Tearing your heart before God, Joel says, now that's a different story. Because when we do that, when we tear our hearts before the Lord, it really does have to mean something. God can tell when we lie. God can tell when we are being untruthful or inauthentic in our motives. And so if we are standing before God to repent, we really need to mean it. It's really important to be sincere. But that's also what Jesus is getting at at this part of the Sermon on the Mount. And again, here's these three things that he talks about, the fasting and prayer and the giving of alms. These things were all done in front of everybody. It was all part of how they publicly practiced their faith. We don't do it that way, but that's what they did. And so Jesus comes along and and what he says is really very countercultural. Because he says, you know, when you're doing your thing with the alms and the prayers and the fasting, maybe this shouldn't be quite so showy and quite so public. In fact, when you pray, and somehow every time we read this every year, I always feel somewhat convicted by this. But Jesus says, when you pray, don't babble on the street corners like some people do. People who love to stand there with their fancy words and they sound so smart as if they enjoy listening to themselves talk. The Greek words here for empty phrases translates literally to babble. And so, yeah, Jesus says, God's just really not into that. So when you do pray, and notice it's not an if, it's a when. When you do pray, do it in secret. Be honest. Be vulnerable. Bear your soul before the Lord. Don't tell anyone you're doing it. Just do it. And when you fast, don't do it to show off. 
Don't twist up your face and let everybody know about your pious suffering. Don't show up wearing a t-shirt that says, my Tommy rumbles for Jesus. No. Don't do any of those things. When you fast, don't tell anybody. Do it in secret. Let it be a spiritual practice that is something between you and God. Ask God to bless your efforts. And then wait and see what God does with it. See how the Spirit opens up your heart and how God transforms you through that experience and through that faith practice. And then the last one, when you give alms, and this is a big one, do that in secret too. I remember a movie where a fellow was giving a speech as they were dedicating a gorilla habitat at a zoo. And the man pretty much took credit for the entire habitat because of his very large contribution that he gave to the project. Well, don't do that, Jesus says. Don't vote with your money. And don't use the power of money to manipulate other people. When you do give, give generously and give cheerfully. And do it in secret. Nobody needs to know what you're doing. Keep that between you and God. The bottom line of all of this is we are not to practice our faith to show off or just because everybody else is doing X, Y, or Z. We're supposed to do these things because they mean something to us. We're supposed to do these things because we want to grow in our relationship with the Lord. We want to practice these faith things, these, these faith practices, because we want to be a better person. This is a lot to ask on a Nash Wednesday. But the good news of Lent is that these disciplines are not listen, limited to just one day or even 40 days because they represent a lifetime of faith work. But as we contemplate our mortality tonight and we hear those words, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, or remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return, there really is no time like the present to ponder some things. What do we need to work on this Lent? What does need to be examined, reevaluated, and possibly changed? What have we been meaning to change in our lives and we've just never quite gotten around to doing it? Maybe now's the time. But whatever it is that we decide to do and however we feel God is calling us tonight, just remember, it's not about the show. It's not about the outward appearance. Remember the words of Joel. Tear your heart, not your clothing. And remember the words of Jesus. So whatever you feel led to do and however you feel led to a faith practice this Lent, do it in secret. And the Lord will reward you and bless you beyond measure. Amen. i
we are God's people by baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, the 40 days of Lent have begun. Be with us in this time of reflection and self-examination. Lead us to those places where our hearts or behaviors need some attention and improvement, and help us to be sincere in our desire to repent and change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for your church. You call us to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Help us to find ways to collaborate with one another and to work together to share the good news of the love of Jesus Christ. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it is good. Protect the mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. In these challenging days of extremely cold weather, watch over all who are in need, all who lack adequate shelter, and all who are living without electricity. We look forward to the promise of spring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you desire your people and all creation to live in peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name before you now. We ask that you would support caregivers who attend all in need. Thank you for being our great physician and for meeting our needs even before we ask. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in the faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we entrust ourselves and all for whom we pray, knowing that you hear and will answer us in your perfect timing and in your enduring faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life, and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Not, hang on, not qu- just one second. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give you strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Let us pray. O God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are what God has made of you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. 
God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. be with us through these 40 days as we prepare our hearts and minds for the celebration of the resurrection. Teach us self-denial and self-control. May we feel kindness and compassion toward others. Teach us to pray, to fast, and give generously of our time, talents, and treasures. Send us into the world in the name of Christ, reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for worship. I pray it was a blessing and a great beginning to these 40 days of this holy season. God be with you and keep you safe, and we'll see you on Sunday. Um, don't forget to wash your hands and wear a mask when you go out, and we'll see you then. <laughs>